The world's longest aircraft, dubbed the Flying Bum, has taken its maiden flight. I and mean, when you see what it looks like, you get it. The Airlander 10 is more than 30 feet long, nearly 50 feet longer than the biggest passenger plane. Its creators say that the unusually shaped aircraft can stay in the sky for days. Jonathan Vigliotti went to see see it in its enormous hangar. It's in England. <laughs> On an airfield just north of London, the world's longest aircraft spreads its tiny wings and takes to the sky. Measuring in around the width and length of a football field, the Airlander 10 is not what you'd call conventional. Up close, it looks even stranger. This is the flight deck. I'll come bring you up here. But chief test pilot David Burns, who was at the controls for the Airlander's maiden flight, says you need to look beyond the shape of the hull, which has been, you could say, the butt of some jokes, to appreciate this very modern flying machine. This is a normal flight deck. Any, any pilot would feel right at home coming in here. The helium-filled Airlander is in fact a Frankenstein of technologies, taking the shape and lift benefits of a blimp and combining them with the maneuverability of a helicopter and the load capacity of a small cargo plane. Its creators, hybrid air vehicles, claim the aircraft is super efficient. And essentially the engines of four SUVs propel this thing? That's right, yeah. That's not a lot. It's not a lot, but that's all we need. It can spend days in the air without refueling, but can't compete with planes or helicopters when it comes to speed. How fast can you go? I go top speed of this 65 knots, about 73 miles per hour. You really see that sleek aerodynamic shape. Spokesman Chris Daniels claims it could be used to drop humanitarian aid into disaster areas. It can land and take off from anywhere. It's amphibious, it can land on water, land on lakes, um, desert, ice, you name it. It doesn't need an airport or to be tethered to the ground like other airships. Benefits that undoubtedly appealed to the U.S. Army, for whom the technology was originally developed before the program was canceled due to the troop drawdown in Afghanistan and budget cuts. Daniel says this allowed the company to buy it back and develop the aircraft for civilian uses. The Airlander's biggest challenge, however, has been overcoming its troubled family history. Say the word airship, and people usually think of the Hindenburg disaster of 1937. Oh my God, it's going down. Even modern blimps occasionally get a bad rap. In October, this unmanned military blimp came loose from its moorings and drifted across central Pennsylvania, tearing up power lines and causing chaos. Daniel says there are many misconceptions. We often get people saying, well, surely it pops like a balloon. Well, no, it doesn't. So we could riddle that hole with bullets. The helium is under such low pressure that it would gradually seep out. We're not an airship, we're the airlander. We are one of the safest forms of transport. It's a bold statement, but there's already competition in the industry. Lockheed Martin is developing its own model. I think it's good for the industry. The, the market is plenty big enough for two people to be in there competing. And despite the Airlander's considerable size, the sky is plenty big enough too. For CBS This Morning, Jonathan Vigliotti, London.